Greetings, YouTube. I find myself in absolute fascination and awe when I look back at the beautiful and surreal landscape work created by the one and only Ansel Adams. Ansel's photographs weren't beautiful because of the presence of vibrant colors, but instead through the richness created through the subtlety between the highlights and shadows. In this video, I'm going to revive the essence of the darkroom and show you how to create beautiful and dramatic black and white photographs within Darktable. So stick around, grab some coffee, and let's get dramatic with Darktable. Black and white photographs are dramatic, rich, and engaging emotionally when there's a full tonal range between black to white where contrast is our best tool to control this dramaticness. Although not readily obvious, Darktable has an array of incredibly powerful tools that allow us to transition our color photographs to black and white photographs with dramatic contrastiness with a great deal of control. And through the use of other supporting modules, we can increase contrast and dodge and burner image, reviving the essence of the darkroom. All right, so let's jump in to Darktable. All right, so we're in Darktable now. And this first photograph I took at the top of Mount Evans in Colorado, and a dense fog had completely covered the mountain. And I really like how the jagged nature of the dead wood really contrasts the smooth nature of the fog. And I think that transitioning this photograph to black and white will bring out that character even more and bring a surreal and dramatic quality to this photograph. All right, so when we aim to transition our photograph to black and white, the first thing we actually wanna do is process the photograph like a color photograph first, because the color actually influences the appearance of the final black and white photograph. So I've already processed this photograph beforehand, and I don't wanna go through all the details of how I process it, but I do wanna mention the highlights. All right, so the most notable enhancements are is I've enhanced the color with color balance RGB. I've added some additional sharpening with the uh, diffuser sharpen module using the lens deblur medium preset. And lastly, I've added some local contrast as well using diffuser sharpen with the local contrast preset. And one final note, it's really important that we get the white balance correct. And in this case, my camera did get it correct, but I did want to mention that because if the white balance is not correct, it will influence the appearance of the resulting black and white photograph. If you'd like more detailed information about how I process my photographs, see the video card above. So the best way in Darktable to transition a photograph to black and white is by creating another instance of the color calibration module. And we want to drag it to after the color balance RGB module and before the tone mapping module, in this case, sigmoid. And the reason for doing this is we want the black and white transition to occur after we've applied additional coloration. All right, so quick tip in case you don't know this, if you hit control shift, you can actually drag a module to a new location in the order of operations. And just remember that the order of operations goes from bottom to top. Generally speaking, Darktable will automatically put the modules in the right location, and I wouldn't generally recommend modifying the location, but in certain circumstances like this one, it's appropriate. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename our new color calibration instance so it's a bit more clear in the chain. Black and white. There we go. And the way we transition a photograph to black and white is through the gray tab in the color calibration module. So we have two options. We can use one of the default presets which emulate different types of films and the color response of those films like Fuji A-Cross 100 or Ilford Delta 100, or we could adjust one of these sliders and that will immediately activate the black and white transition. So I've always really liked the Ilford Delta 100 film and I tend to think that the Ilford Delta 100 preset works really well on most photographs and that's what I'm gonna use here but stick to the very end of this video because I'm gonna show you what these RGB sliders do in the last photograph and the effect that it has on the resulting photograph. So transitioning now to black and white. The emotional response of the photograph completely changes. 
The only thing it needs now is a bit more contrast. So there are a multitude of ways to add contrast and dark table. And if you'd like to see some more ideas about how to add contrast, see the video card above. But for this video, I'm going to show two methods plus one more in the third photograph. So the first method is both very easy and very effective. And that's the color balance RGB module. We can go to the bottom to the perceptual brilliance grading, and we can increase the brilliance of the highlights and decrease the brilliance of the shadows. Adding contrast. So the second method is also easy, but it gives us even more control and that's via the tone equalizer module. So we can use the tone equalizer to create a basic tone curve and add even more contrast, but with increased control. So I'm going to go ahead and search through the tone equalizer. And the tone equalizer actually has some really good base presets. And one of those that works really well generally is this contrast tone curve soft. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that here. So the tone equalizer's base preset really nailed the contrast for this photograph. And we can actually go ahead and adjust the contrast even more of some really fine control by adjusting this curve. And for the next photograph, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that and demonstrate it. All right, so one final note here. This photograph is very rich and interesting because the tonal range of the photograph is full. If we look at the uh, waveform, we can tell that it's almost completely full from top to bottom. And if you look at the photograph, we can tell that we have all those subtle, some really deep shadows and some really bright highlights and a lot of information in between, making this photograph really interesting. And also, I like how the black and white nature really brings out the dead character of the wood. All right, so one reason for choosing to make a photograph black and white is because the color in the photograph is actually interfering with the artistic intent of your photograph. And this image here is an excellent example of that because there isn't very much color to begin with and the hues of dark green that exists is distracting attention from the shape and form I was trying to juxtapose between the snow, fog, spruce trees, and mountainside. All right, so like the first photograph, I'm gonna use a new instance of color calibration to transition this to black and white. I'm gonna use the Ilford Delta 100 preset. Now let's add some additional contrast. So let's use the tone equalizer to get a starting base for some additional contrast. using contrast tone curve soft. Now let's further modify the curve for some additional contrast. All right, so in particular, I wanna make the shadows deeper and I wanna brighten the highlights as well. So I'm gonna start by adjusting the shadows. Bring these way down. There we go. Then I'm gonna add some to the highlights as well going to get this curve really nice and steep. There we go. All right, so when you remove the color from this photograph and transition it to black and white, it really brings attention to how the different lines of trees converge at the top of the mountain and how the light diffuses through the fog as you look in the distance, and that's exactly what I was trying to communicate. And honestly, this is really inspired by the work of Ansel Adams, and I think I did it justice. All right, so here's a landscape photograph I took in Iceland with these crepe high rays pushing through the clouds. I'm gonna go ahead and transition it to black and white the same way as before with a new instance of color calibration. Turning that on. we end up with this resulting black and white photograph. All right, so sometimes in image processing, we don't wanna apply contrast globally to the whole photograph. Sometimes we just wanna specifically target certain spots of the photograph and brighten or darken them. And that's actually what one could do in the old days of the darkroom through a variety of very complicated techniques. And I wanna revive the spirit of the darkroom here in Darktable. 
All right, so same as before, we can use the color balance RGB module or the tone equalizer to add contrast to the photograph. But in this case, we wanna pair it with a drawn mask or a parametric mask so we can target specific spots. In this case, I wanna bring brilliance to the crepuscular rays, bringing attention to them. All right, so for this photograph, I made a new instance of color balance RGB, and I'm gonna make a drawn mask so I can target the crepuscular rays. So the way we can do that is, is we can scroll to the bottom of the color balance RGB module, and we can select this pencil icon here for drawn mask. The trick to creating this mask effectively is to use a brush with a very low opacity and painting on the mask very carefully and very slowly, one iteration at a time, and then you end up with a very smooth resulting mask. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the brush icon here. And then if you go ahead and compress the history tab, we'll see that the mask manager will show up. And within the mask manager, we can actually adjust the opacity of the brush. So I'm gonna right click it and use an opacity of 5%. So the trick here is we want to apply brush strokes one swath at a time and cover up the crepuscular rays and eventually we will build up a very smooth mask. All right, so if you spend what might be several minutes applying these brush strokes very carefully, we'll end up with this very smooth mask like the mask right here. And we can turn that mask on and off via the circle square icon right here. So if we turn the mask off, we can now increase the brilliance of the highlights and add that extra pop to the crepuscular rays. So adding some highlight brilliance, really brings a dramatic character to the crepuscular rays. All right, so one last photograph for you guys. And this is actually the photograph used for the uh, thumbnail for the YouTube video. And this photograph will serve as an excellent test bed for adjusting the various RGB sliders in the color calibration module and see how it affects the resulting black and white image and the emotional content as well. All right, so like before, I'm gonna create another instance of the color calibration module and put it before the sigmoid module. And I'm gonna go into the grays tab and I'm gonna start adjusting the sliders. To get the best results with these sliders, it's best to first look at the image and see where the color and brightness is and then adjust the RGB sliders accordingly to get the appearance that we want. So skin tones are very sensitive to the color response of black and white conversion and will change significantly when you adjust the balance of the RGB sliders. Skin tones have a lot of red in them, so I'm gonna start by adjusting the red slider. We'll notice that when I do that, that the part of my skin that's illuminated by the key light will illuminate. <laughs> this image is already dark and moody, but let's add some green and blue as well. So adding some green. And now we'll notice that when we increase the blue, the background wall will start to illuminate because it was blue. All right, this is a good starting place. So as I mentioned before, skin has a lot of red in it. And if you have a strong presence of red and decrease the green, we'll notice that it brings a really smooth and lush quality to the skin tones. Contrarily, if we increase the green and reduce the red, it'll bring out the textural qualities of the skin. And honestly, I kind of like it this way because it really brings a dark accent to my left eye, making the scene very moody and dramatic. So Dark Table allows us with very extensive control to create beautifully dramatic black and white photographs. Using tools like color calibration, color balance RGB, the tone equalizer, or by making local adjustments with masks, we can revive the spirit of the darkroom and bring that dramatic contrast to our black and white photographs within Darktable. Hey, so I hope you found this video intriguing and informative. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any other ideas on how to create beautiful and dramatic black and white photographs within Darktable, also let me know. And lastly, if you have any other ideas for future videos, let me know as well because it helps me make better videos for you. Hey, so thanks for taking time out of your day to watch my video. 
Hope you found it intriguing and valuable. If you did, leave a like. It really helps out my channel. Also, if you'd like to check out more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, if you'd like to check out some of my photographic work, see the link in the description below. Hope to see you in our video.